Hi folks, welcome to the Drone and Sundry YouTube channel brought to you by SUAS News and our new weekly show on 3D printing for drones. My name is Tian from SUAS News and I invite you to join me as I begin exploring the 3D printing technology and perhaps how it could be useful in the drone world. This is a new segment we're going to be doing on a regular basis here at Drone and Sundry, all about 3D printing for drones. Gary Mortimer and myself have been talking about 3D printing in the drone industry quite a lot over the last year or so, and we decided it was time to see the technology in action firsthand. So about six weeks ago, I bought a clone of the Prusa i3 open source printer from a South African company down in the Durban area called DIY Electronics. Since then, I've been tinkering non-stop with the machine, trying to climb the learning curve and get a hang of the ins and outs of 3D printing. At SUS News, we see the potential for a big future for this technology in the drone market, as Gary aptly described in his video a while back, where he showed and spoke about 3D lab print and the printed RC plane models. You can find a link to that video in the description below. While we were putting together that video, uh, I was inspired both by 3D Lab Print's way of getting high quality fixed wing aircraft designs out to the world for people to 3D print at home, as well as by some of Gary's comments on the subject. Particularly his comments about a new dynamic that could emerge between drone manufacturers and end users. This got me thinking about a few questions regarding this tech obviously, and the commercial and how it applies to the commercial drone market, with the first and main question being whether or not locally manufactured 3D printed UAVs really are the future. I will be delving into this question over the coming months on this show, but first we're going to have a quick look at what 3D printing is. Three-dimensional printing technology is known as additive layer manufacturing or just additive manufacturing. And it's the process of turning a digital 3D model into a solid three-dimensional object. Most of the consumer 3D printers out there at the moment, including the Prusa i3, which we'll be using, use an additive layer manufacturing process called Fused Deposition Modeling, or FDM. Ben Redwood from 3D Hubs summarizes this process quite well. Fused Deposition Modeling, or FDM, sometimes also referred to as Fused Filament Fabrication, or Triple F, uses a string of solid thermoplastic material, otherwise known as filament, pushing it through a heated nozzle and melting it in the process. The printer continuously moves this nozzle around, laying down the melted material at a precise location where it instantly cools down and solidifies. This builds up a part layer by layer. 3D Hubs has a very nice overview of the different 3D printing processes, a link to which you can find in the video description below. An even simpler way to describe this type of 3D printing is actually just two-dimensional printing over and over again, layer on top of layer until a three-dimensional object is formed. The basic workflow starts with designing a three-dimensional model in CAD, or computer-aided design software. This 3D model is then digitally sliced into tens or even hundreds of layers. These layers are then sent to the 3D printer as coordinates and instructions for the printer to follow. Basically, the horizontal and vertical coordinates, as well as instructions for the amount of material that needs to be pulled through the heated nozzle, as well as the nozzle and bed temperatures and the printer speed, etc, etc. The 3D printer then builds these layers, one on top of another, one layer at a time, with molten materials such as ABS plastic, basically the same type of plastic as Lego, nylon, metals such as copper and even wood materials. The list of materials one can print with is growing daily. For this type of 3D printing, the hardware is not really complicated. The real magic happens in the software where a digital file or model is turned into the printer instructions. Anyway, back to our show here on YouTube. Now that we have our own printer, we can start testing some of the ideas and assumptions out there about 3D printing for drones. If you have any printing tips for me or you have any questions, please drop a comment below in the video. I would very much appreciate any input from the more experienced printers out there as I get to grips with the technology over the coming months. Also don't forget to subscribe to Drone and Sundry so that you don't miss out on future 3D printing for drones videos.